Section 5 of Ovid Heroides. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Julie van Malchem. Section 5 of Ovid Heroides. Translated by an unknown translator. First published in 1813. Oinoni to Paris. May I hope that you will read this? Or, overawed by your new bride, must you treat it with neglect? Read it over, I entreat you. It is no threatening letter sent you from my kine. I, the nymph Oinoni, famous in the Phrygian woods, complain of injuries received from you whom I am still fond to call mine, if you permit. What God opposes himself to my wishes? What crime have I committed, that I no longer possess your love? Where we suffer deservedly, we ought to bear it with patience, but unmerited calamities sit heavy upon us. You were yet in low circumstances when I, a nymph sprung from a mighty river, was contented to receive you for my husband. So now the son of Priam, excuse my freedom, you were then no more than a slave. Nor did I disdain to wed you even in that meanest rank. Oft under the shade of a tree have we quietly rested midst the flocks, where the ground strewn with leaves afforded a pleasant couch. Oft in our lowly cottage, secure from hail and freezing winds, have you contentedly reposed on straw or a bed of hay? Who shewed you the forest best stocked with game? Or pointed out the rocky caverns where the savage dam concealed the young? A constant companion of your toils, I often spread the knotted net and cheered your sweeping hounds along the mountain's brow. The beaches still preserve my name carved by your hand, and Oinoni, the work of your pruning knife is read upon their bark, and as the trunks increase, the letter still delays. Grow on and rise as testimonies of my just claim. There grows a poplar, I remember it, by the riverside on which is carved the motto of our love. Flourish, thou poplar, fed by the bordering stream whose furrowed bark bears this inscription. Sooner shall Xanthus hasten back to his source than Paris be able to live without his Oinoni. Xanthus, flow backward. Backward flow your streams. Paris still lives, though fadeless, to his Oinoni. My misfortunes began from that unhappy day in which Venus, Juno, and Minerva, most graceful when clad in shining armour, appointed you judge of the prize of beauty. It was then that a black storm overcast my former peace. My heart failed while you repeated the fatal tale, and a cold trembling shot through all my bones. I acquainted the aged patrons and sages with my just fears, and they all agreed that some misfortune was approaching. Trees are cut down, ships are built, and the sea-green waves bear up your well-appointed fleet. When about to depart, you melted into tears. This, at last, you need not be ashamed to own. The present love is far more guilty than the past. You wept, and witnessed my melting grief. The mingled tears spoke our mutual sadness. You clasped your arms round my neck, more closely than the curling vines embrace a towering elm. How did your companions smile when you complained of the unfriendly winds? They favoured but love detained you. How often at parting did you repeat the ardent kisses, while your tongue was scarcely able to utter a last farewell? A propitious gale swells your sails bellying from the rigid masts, and the sea foams after the repeated strokes of the oars. Hapless, I pursue with my eyes the lessening canvas, and water the sands with my tears. I implore the narrates for your speedy return, a speedy return indeed to my sorrow. Have then my praise brought you back only for the sake of another? 
and have i solicited the gods on behalf of an injurious harlot a high rock formed by nature overlooks the boundless sea this recipe's opposes itself to the beating waves hence i first espied your swelling sails and hardly could forbear plunging into the deep as i waited with impatience for your arrival i discerned upon the deck a purple garment this made me tremble as i well knew that it was not your dress the ship approached and urged by a favourable gale reached the land when with a throbbing heart i espied my hated rival whose head even why delayed i to leap into the sea rested upon your bosom and this i tore my hair and beat my breast and urged by despair scratched my face with my inhuman nails i the sacred groves resounded with my mournful complaints and hence i bore them to those caves which were conscious of our former love so may helen also complain and mourn like me a faithless spouse may she too taste of those sorrows which on her account i now so severely feel you are at present charmed with one who forsakes her lawful husband and follows you over the wide sea but when a poor shepherd you attended your little flock oinone alone made you an offer of her bed i have no eye to your riches nor am i moved by your stately palace i have no ambition to be numbered among the daughters of potent priam yet priam needs not to be ashamed of owning himself the father-in-law of a nymph nor needs hecuba dissemble that i am her daughter i married and wish to become the consort of a powerful prince nor would a regal sceptre ill become my hands it is no dishonour to have lain with you upon the new fallen leaves i am the more fit to ascend the bed of state add that you are safe in my love no wars threaten you no revengeful ships plough the waves fugitive helen is demanded back by host alarms and sees with pride that the war must be her dowry ask of hector your brother polydamus or diphobus was sure to be restored consult with the sage antenor and your rage sire priam whom years and long experience have taught wisdom it is scandalous to prefer a mistress to your native country you engaged in a shameful cause her husband raises a just war against you nor flatter yourself that this lacedaemonian will long prove constant she who was so easily enticed to your embraces as young atrides complains of his dishonoured bed and mourns the injury done to him by a foreign love so shall you lament in your turn chastity when one sullied can never be recovered one false step ruins it for ever she now burns for you thus she once loved men allows he too easy of belief lies now in a forlorn bed happy andromache the worthy consort of a faithful spouse my fidelity merited a like return from you you are lighter than withered leaves driven by the inconstant winds or than stalks of wheat parched by the continual heat of the sun heretofore your sister now i recollect forewarned me of all and with her hair dishevelled thus prophesied my approaching fate what is it you hope for oinone why bury you thus your seat in the sand why plough you up the shore with unprofitable steers the grecian hypha comes fatal to you to troy and our ancient house she comes forbid it heaven and now while it may be done overwhelm the guilty ship alas how is she fraught with phrygian blood she said her servant carried her off full of the guard my hair was erect with fear ah you too truly foretold my wretched fate this hive now feeds in my lawns though fair to look upon she is yet a prostitute whom strangers have easily enticed from her native home thus theseaus if i do not mistake the name one theseaus formerly made her a prize it is likely no doubt that she was restored safe and untouched by youth passionate and fond if you wonder how i obtained knowledge of this story i answer said i laugh you may call it violence and think to hide her fault by specious name 
it is evident that one who has been carried off so often must have contrived to the rape but oinoni continues faithful to a perjured spouse and yet i might have returned the injury in kind i was pursued by the satires a lustful crew and to escape their violence concealed myself in the woods fawns too adorned with garlands of pine leaves drays me over either swelling summits phobus the guardian god of troy obtained at last by violence what others had struggled for in vain i tore his hair and left on his face the marks of my rage yet i desired no sordid recompense of jewels or gold nor would many prostitutes my free charms for hire he thought me worthy to be entrusted with the healing art and rewarded me with the same knowledge for which he is himself so famed my skill reaches to every herb and healing root which the fertile earth produces but unhappy that i am my art avails not my own cure nor are herbs sufficient to heal the wounds of love even phobus the founder of our art fed we are told to the herds of admetus nor could he withstand the pointed flames not heaven nor earth with all his bounteous store can ease my pain it is from you alone that i expect relief paris can relieve and i have deserved it pity a maid who merits and loves you my alliance will bring upon you no dangerous bloody wars i am yours and with you innocently pass my infant years heaven grant that what yet remains of life may be also spent with you and of oinoni to paris